Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we'll cover how to schedule Jupyter Notebooks with Daxter. If you need to set up Daxter or a Daxter project, then watch the previous video. Link is in the description below. I covered how to schedule a Jupyter Notebook via Jupyter Lab in this video here. However, Jupyter Labs user interface and logging can use some improvement. For a better user experience and logging, we will move our notebook to Daxter. We have the following notebook. It reads data from a database and we have few visualization for data analysis. The notebook is borrowed from Python's exploratory data analysis video. You can find the link in the description below. We can run this notebook to make sure our code is valid and it executes. As it happened, the our code execute perfectly fine. Let's say we want to schedule this notebook to run every day at 9 a.m. so our visuals are updated for the end users. Let's clear all the outputs and copy this notebook into our Daxter project. I am using the project that we have created in Manage Your Data Pipelines with Daxter video. We create a folder called Notebooks to house all the notebooks that we want to schedule or run with Daxter. We paste our notebook in this folder here. For Daxter to pick up this notebook, we need to create an asset. And for that, we'll create a new file called asset underscore data analysis.py. To run a notebook, we need the Daxter mill library. This is a wrapper around the paper mill library. And we can install it on our system with a pip command, pip install Daxter mill. We import Daxter and from it, file relative path. In addition, we import the Daxter mill and from this, we import define Daxter mill asset. We declare a variable and set this equal to define Daxter mill asset function. To this function, we provide a name. This is the name that will appear on the asset. For the notebook path, we use the file relative path and provided our notebooks path. The group name is the asset group name. And finally, to the IO manager key, we provide output notebook IO manager. With this, our asset definition is complete. Now let's move to the init file to load this asset into our project. In this file, we import the Daxter mill and from it, we utilize local output notebook IO manager in the import section, we import our newly defined asset. In addition, we add it to the load asset from modules. Under resources, we provide the IO manager for the notebook. With these changes in place, we are ready to test out this new asset. Let's start the Daxter server and see if it picks up our new asset. We navigate to this URL and Daxter server is available. We see our notebook asset group, and in this asset group, we have a notebook asset. We can preview the notebook from the pane on the right. There are no execution details yet, and we don't see any visuals. Let's select and materialize this to make sure our notebook execute with Daxter. Daxter will execute this notebook, and we can view the execution instance either by clicking on the pop-up that appears in the middle of the screen or the unique hash that is available on the asset itself. We can preview the execution logs and the status here. If there are any errors, they'll be logged here. The UI, workflow, and the logging makes Daxter a much better option. Our notebook execution is complete. We can navigate back to the main UI and view the asset status and view the executed notebook. Here we can see our code is executed and we can see the various visualizations that are part of this notebook. Great. We have accomplished the first part, that is our notebook is available as part of Daxter asset and we can execute it on an ad hoc basis. Now we'll work on scheduling this. To schedule an asset, we need a job. We can create the job in the init file but let's keep all the jobs together in another module 
for maintenance and scalability. We create a jobs file. In this file, we import the asset. And from Daxter, we import define asset job and asset selection. With the help of define asset job function, we create a job. This is the function for defining a job from a selection of assets. We provide the name of the job and select our asset with asset selection. Asset selection defines a query over sets of asset, normally all the assets available in our code location. So this is the composition of our job. Next, we will define schedule definition. We import schedule definition from Daxter and along with that, we import the job file. With the help of schedule definition function, we define the schedule definition. We provided the job, schedule time, and the time zone. Our schedule is defined. All we have to do is import it in our init file for Daxter to pick it up. In the init file, we import the job and the schedule file. From these file, we import our run Jupyter job and everyday 9 a.m. schedule respectively. We add the job and the schedule to the definition. With these addition, our schedule is ready. Before heading back to the Daxter UI, make sure the Daxter daemon is running. And if it is not, then you can run it with Daxter daemon run command. The daemon is responsible for monitoring and executing our schedules. Make sure to run it in a separate command prompt or terminal. Do not terminate the Daxter server. Let's save all of our work and head to Daxter UI. We reload our code and upon success, we navigate to overview then schedules. Our notebook schedule is listed here. We can toggle the slider right to enable the schedule. Our notebook schedule is enabled and it will run at 9 a.m. every day from Monday to Friday. And our job has a clock right next to it. And if we are to hover over it, it displays the schedule time and days. So this is how we can schedule our Jupyter notebooks with Daxter. And this notebook will run every day and we can view the run instance along with logs in the Daxter UI and if there are any errors or anything, they'll be logged here. And Daxter has verbose logging, so you can detect errors, pick up the errors, and troubleshoot your notebook. This is all on Daxter for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.